Okay, friends, be sure and watch the show very carefully today because I'm going to give you some nuggets of gold, some tips on how easy it is to write your book, to share your story, to share your faith, to share your testimony. Stay tuned. Hi, folks. Kerry Farr here. Welcome to In Your Corner. Hey, have you ever thought about writing a book? We have the Paragon the absolute uh, pattern of excellence on the program today. His name is Ken Abraham. Ken is such a prolific author, but not only a pro prolific author, author, but an incredibly successful author. Ken has had over 13 of his books on the New York Times bestseller list. If you've ever thought about writing a book, you need to stick around and hear Ken Abraham tell how he went from not being a writer to being a prolific and successful writer. Okay, folks, we're back with author extraordinaire Ken Abraham. And Ken, the last time we talked, you told an incredible story about your first book that was 934 pages. You found somebody that would look at it, but they said, go cut it in half. And you basically spent months cutting it in half. You took it back to them. It was 440 pages. They asked you to go cut it in <laughs> half again. Yeah. And then finally, when you got to the end product, it was 160 pages or thereabouts, and it ended up being a very good selling book. What is the moral of that story for <laughs> the writer that's listening today? Well, the first thing for me was to keep my ego out of the way. And if you're going to be a writer, you, you have to deal with rejection all the time anyhow. Or if you're going to be a music artist, or, or in a lot of ways, uh, all of us deal with rejection. But especially if you're a writer, uh, it becomes real personal because you've poured your heart and soul into it. I worked seven years on that manuscript, care, and, and, the, and the editor said, go back and cut it, as you, as you mentioned there. So it was a humbling experience for me. It was very humbling. But at the same time, the, the best thing that came out of that was I realized God was placing people in my life to help me. If I kept my ears open and I kept my heart open, he would put people in my life that would help me. He put this editor in my life to help me, not to hurt me, not, not to humiliate me or to, to cause me to uh, quit my career or anything like that. He put that man in my life to help me. And I firmly believe that. And, and other editors over the years I've found that God has put in my, my path uh, working on different projects that I thought, I have this just exactly right, this is the way it needs to be. And then I would work with an editor and they'd say, you know what, Ken, have you thought of this? Have you given this idea an, a, a chance? And those kind of things have really helped me over the years. So those two things, number one, the humility, and the second thing is to look for the people that God is putting into your life to help you. If there's some place where he's, he's calling you to go, something he's calling you to do, he's not, he's not taking you out there in a vacuum. He's not, he's not saying, okay, you go do this that has never been done before and you're all on your own. No, first of all, of course, his Holy Spirit will guide you. But even more than that, he will bring people into your path that can help you get where he wants you to go. But I see a th third component there. Right. Had you not been willing oh, yeah. to obey yeah. and do what that man told you, you would have not been published. You would have maybe never been the writer that you are today. Well, thank you. I sure appreciate that. But you're right. That is a key because that willingness. You know, there's an old saying that God is not so much interested in my ability as he is my, my availability. availability. Yes. And it's so true. I mean, you know, think of it. God could raise up angels to do what I do if he wanted to, but he hasn't done that. He's chosen me. But there has to be a willing heart, a willingness to say, all right, you're, you're in charge here, Lord, and I'm just doing what you want me to do. I, I deal with that every day because I write stories for other people. I don't write too many books of my own. I've written a few, but most of the books that, that people are aware of that I've written, somebody else's name is on the front cover. There are some books that I've written that you may not even know that somebody else's yeah, name is on right. the front cover. You're a ghostwriter. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, somebody asked me, uh, they said, well, what's the difference between a ghostwriter and a collaborator? Because <laughs> I'm a collaborator here. Uh, they said, what's the difference? I said, usually it's about three zeros at the end of the check. <laughs> That's about it. Other than that. 
<laughs> there is no difference. But in order, but I'll tell you what, there is a foundational principle there. You have to keep your ego nailed to the cross. Yeah. If you're going to be used of God to touch the world, the world does not need to hear how special you are. The world needs to know how special Jesus is. Wow. And if you, if you will keep your ego nailed to the cross, if you keep your heart surrendered, your will surrendered to Him, he can do it, and He will do it through you. That's the marvelous thing, what He wants to do in and through our lives. I, I may have told you earlier, I've changed my prayer life. I used to get up every morning and say, God, help me to go out and do this. Help me to be this. Help me to you know, be there or go there. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I don't pray that way anymore. My prayer, my first prayer in the morning, usually after a couple of cups of coffee, uh, is Jesus, be yourself in me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, be yourself in me. That's my, my prayer today. Jesus, be yourself in me. We said before, Christ in us is the hope of glory. It's what He wants to do in and through our lives. It, that's going to make the difference in the world. And the treasure is in the earthen vessel. Ooh, it's yeah. not the earthen vessel, Great right? principle, yeah. <laughs> We're just a hunk of mud, that's right. Yeah. But, but he, he uses that hunk of mud to touch other hunks of mud. And you know what? Getting us ready for eternity with Him. Yeah, and God has gifted each one of us, and God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And, and Ken, I think that there's so many people, you know, evidently you had the drive or the intestinal fortitude to do what God had called you to do. What, you know, if there's somebody out there watching today in the audience that, that they know that God has a plan and a purpose for their life, but for some reason they're struggling and can't seem to accomplish that, what do they need to do? First of all is persevere, of course, and, and pray probably before that even. But perseverance, I think, is something that we don't talk about nearly enough. I, I speak to young writers who uh, are saying, boy, I've been working on this manuscript for months and months and it's just not coming together. I said, I worked for seven years on that first manuscript that I was telling you about. Yeah, and other people have worked much longer. God, God is willing to, to bless what we're doing and willing to help us to get where He wants us to go. But you know what? We've got to put in the work. And it's not easy sometimes, and sometimes it's discouraging. Uh, and you really need to keep your mind and your, your focus on the goal and, and, and where you believe that, that God wants you to go. And how you get there is up to Him, but where you need to go and what He's called you to do, that's got to be out there. I used to write things on the mirror. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And, and boy, my job today is to get up and to write a book. Uh, how daunting is that? I mean, I get up every day, turn on the computer, and my job is to put words on a screen that somebody wants to read. Is that difficult? Well, not only is it difficult, because not only are they going to read it, but they've got to pay 25 bucks to read it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's daunting. It, so, yeah. And, and see, some days I get up and Terry, everything just flows. It's incredible. It's like, wow, one idea after another keeps coming. Other days, I'll sit there and I'll stare at that computer screen and say, I know there's, there's a word in my brain somewhere that's going to come out here eventually, but it's not coming right now. And it's just drudgery sometimes. See, both of those though, and here's the key, both of those, I'm still in God's will. I'm still doing what God wants me to do. When it's easy or when it's difficult, I'm still doing what He wants me to do. I'm obedient to what He's asked me to, to do. That's what matters. It's not so much whether it comes so quickly or whether it takes years to get it out there. The question is, will I follow Him? And will I go where He wants me to go? do what He asked me to do. Yeah, and so, you know, people see that they, they are gifted and uh, and yet they quit when they're right on the finish line so often, you know. Oh, yeah. Was it uh, Three Feet from Gold, that, that classic book? Uh, you know, it was so close to, to reaching out and grabbing the goal and then, and then gave up. Oh, no, please don't. don't please quit. don't. There's so much at stake. The doors are wide open. The opportunities are there. Jesus talked about the, the fields being white, white unto harvest. Have they ever been more accessible to us than, than they are today? That's right. We are, we are a, a chosen generation. We really are. We really are. And you know, I want to pick up on that when we come back from the break because I, I, want, I want you to share what the moral of, of that story is when we come back. And folks, we'll be right back in a moment with Ken Abraham. Hello friend, I have an amazing tip for you today. Did you know that today it is so simple to self-publish a book and, and get it in the largest bookstore in the world just like that? The largest bookstore that I'm talking about is Amazon.com. Now let me share with you how simple it is to write and self-publish your book today. Did you know that you could sit down and write out 10 questions about the subject that you want to share, 10 frequently asked questions, 
And those would be your chapter titles. And then you could have somebody in your household record you speaking about those 10 subjects. You could have somebody interview you and ask you a question about each of those subjects. And all you do is you speak two to five minutes about each of those subjects. And when you're done, you've got a good portion of your manuscript done. Now, I want to help you share your faith. I want to help you tell your story. I want to help you get published. Do you want to impact our culture for the kingdom of God? Well, God has made you in His image, and for that reason, you are very creative. And you are loaded with creativity and talent. And I'm certain that you want to share your story, but you're probably like I was. You're afraid. You're afraid of what your friends might say. You're afraid of rejection. You're wondering if anybody even cares what you have to say. Well, my friend, I want to tell you that you have a story to tell and the world needs to hear your story. I was speaking at a church in Chicago a number of years ago after I'd written my first book, Fight the Good Fight. And I had shared some personal things that were very embarrassing to me. But I felt like I had to share them because I thought they would help someone else. And after the service was over, the pastor asked me to go out into the foyer and greet people who had heard my testimony that morning. And I was amazed as grown men in their 50s and 60s came up to me with tears in their eyes and their lips quivering. And they would say to me, I haven't gotten over it. I haven't gotten over it. And they were still suffering the pain of abuses that they had experienced as a child. And then a dear sweet lady, a beautiful lady in her 70s came up to me and she was also crying. And she said to me, my father and my brothers repeatedly raped me as I was growing up. And she said, I was so traumatized by this that I've been married five times before I finally found a good marriage and a good husband. She said, should I write and tell my story? And I turned to that dear sweet lady and I said, you absolutely should tell your story because the world needs to hear your story and how you've overcome these things. And my friend, the world needs to hear your story. You see, I understand exactly how you feel because I felt the same way. My friends actually laughed at me when I told them about my dream of writing my book. My wife had recently died. My first wife, Diane, had died of breast cancer. And I was a broken, shattered man. I didn't have any self-confidence. Even though I'd been a boxing coach for over 20 years of my life and had coached professional athletes, I had no confidence in myself. But God was impressing upon my heart that I needed to tell my story, that I needed to share my testimony with the world. And I went to a couple of writer friends and they literally you know, discouraged me. I went to another person who was a writer and that person also discouraged me. And I almost gave up on my dream. And then I turned to a trusted advisor, my Sunday school teacher, Zig Ziglar. Yeah, the great motivational speaker, but even a more greater encourager, Zig Ziglar. And I asked Zig, I said, Zig, I want to write a book, but people are discouraging me. Would you read this chapter? And he said, I will. And I went back to him after Sunday school a week later, and I said, I asked you to read that chapter. And he said, and I did. And I said, well, should I trash this idea? You see, I had so little self-confidence. I didn't ask him how to finish the project. I just asked him if I should throw my dream away. And he said, no, you're a good storyteller, and you have a story to tell. You absolutely should finish your work. And my friend, I want to tell you that you have a story to tell. Well, since that day when Zig told me I should finish my book, it took me two years to write that book. But because of Zig's encouragement, that gave me the perseverance and the strength to finish that book. If I only knew then what I know now, I could have written that book in a week. And since then, I've written seven more books, and I've literally 
learn how to write and publish a book in about a week. And I want to teach you how to do it. I'm the developer of the course, the workshop, the weekend Saturday three-hour workshop where I teach you how to write your book in a weekend. It's called Create Your Own Book This Weekend. And my friend, we've got uh, these workshops coming up over the course of the next few months all over different parts of the country. We're going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas, Portsmouth, Ohio, Florida. Go to our website and see if we're going to be in your area because I would love to have you come learn how to write your book in a weekend. Just go to createyourownbookthisweekend.com and you'll see the information there about where and when we're going to be holding these workshops. Hello, my friend. I know that you have a story to share. Everybody has a book inside them, and so do you. I want to help you share your story. Do you know that when I wrote my first three books, I just sat down and wrote them and didn't do any research at all? I didn't know you were supposed to do research. But did you know that you don't want to write a book that has a title that nobody is searching for? I want to give you a little secret. If you want a successful book, you want to go to Google keyword search and put in the topic that you're planning on writing about and see if anybody is searching for that topic. The last book that I wrote is called Create Your Own Book. The reason that I used that title was I went to Google and found out that 75,000 people per month were searching for the words Create Your Own Book. So I titled my book, Create Your Own Book. So whenever somebody is searching for those terms, Create Your Own Book, guess what? My video or my book comes up that says, Create Your Own Book. I have a much greater chance of selling books if I write a title that somebody is looking for. Now, I want to give you a free resource to help you write your book. We developed a a template. It's a free book template that I want to give you. Just go to freebooktemplate.com and download yours today. It'll help you write your book very quickly. Okay, folks, we're back with that great writer, Ken Abraham. And Ken, you know, you've had all of these great books, you know, on a New York bestseller list, these best-selling books. And, you know, here I am just uh, an ordinary guy couldn't get a publishing deal, but yet I've published, self-published five books. Now, there are a lot of people out there, many people out there, almost everybody that doesn't have your talent, but it doesn't mean that their story's not significant. What would you say to somebody that wants to publish a book, but they can't get it published you know, with a major publisher. Well, first of all, thank you for those kind words. Uh, I appreciate that a lot because I feel like I'm just a journeyman as well. But I, I, I think that the great news is the opportunities are available now where self-publishing is a viable opportunity for anybody, uh, anybody that takes the time to do the work. And, and it's still gotta be done well. See, sometimes we think, okay, if I, just, if I just write it, it can be sloppy. No, if it's gonna touch the world, it, it needs to be done well, as if it's you're writing it for a major publisher. The great thing about about it though is you first of all you have all the resources available to you with self-publishing now that a major publisher has uh, the editing the copy editing all those kind of things the printing manufacturing can all be there it's yours really at your fingertips and there are all sorts of, of self-publishing uh, home houses available to do that now yeah and you know I was just gonna I was just gonna add the first book that I that I self-published I went through a company I won't mention her name but they charged me two thousand dollars to do the book and then I later went directly to, you know, uh, a division of Ingram and self-published myself. And then I found out today with Kindle Direct Publishing and Create Space, you can do a manuscript and and basically upload the book, and they will right. do the formatting for you. Maybe you pay somebody to do a cover design for you, but for less than a couple hundred dollars, <laughs> you can have a book 
that's on Kindle Direct Publishing or Amazon.com. Right. I get a check. It's not as significant as the ones you get, but I get a check every <laughs> every month yeah. from Amazon for books that I've self-published. And the books are there right now. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't take forever. Now, let's be honest. There are a lot of people that, that turn to self-publishing because they're lazy. That's yeah. the wrong reason. Okay, if you're not going to be diligent, if you're not going to take the time and effort to do it right, then don't do it. But if you're going to do it right, self-publishing is a viable opportunity to get that message out now. You don't have, see, every book I write has a, 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 a about a nine month lead time. The book I turn in today, publishers will not have on the shelves for another year. It's a nine month lead time for me. As a professional writer working with, with top New York publishers, it's a nine month lead time. Now, we do some books, you know, Elvis died today and we have a book out next week. Right, uh, yeah. You know, the, the Pope was, uh, uh, the Pope resigned. Next week there's another book out about, about the Pope. That happens, but that's rare. And publishers don't like to do that all the time. The, the normal process takes nine months to a year. You can, you can circumvent that whole process with self-publishing and have a book out touching lives within weeks. You absolutely can. And actually, uh, you know, you can get that book on Kindle Direct Publishing or yep. Create Space, places like that. And the beauty of that is they do uh, all of the uh, fulfillment. They they will ship the book. You don't. Ha I, when I wrote my first book, people would order my book. I'd stick it in an envelope, put postage on it, and send it to them. Sure. I don't have to do any of that now. <laughs> no, that's right. It's 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 mailed out to them, and they just send you a check at the end of the month. And just because you start with a book that's self-published doesn't mean that a publisher will not pick that up at some point. Oh, absolutely. We have some great stories right here in Nashville. Dave Ramsey, for example, uh, self-published his first book, uh, Financial Peace. And that book has sold millions of copies now. Eventually, Viking Penguin picked it up. Uh, I think they sold, I don't know how many millions of copies with him. Then Thomas Nelson, of course, has, has published Dave. Uh, the Shack was another book that basically started out with a small basically a self-published kind of operation and then Hachette picks, picked it up and it's gone to millions of copies uh, being sold. Here's where it starts though. It starts right here in your head. Yeah. Because if you think that because I'm self-publishing it's mediocre, it's going to be right. mediocre. You have to think I'm working with an attitude of excellence. I'm doing this for God. Everything I do, I do as unto the Lord. It, whether, it, whether it reaches one person or 10 people or 10 million, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. And you start right here with that attitude. Because we, uh, we live in Nashville. We have musicians here in Nashville that, that uh, some of them are designed, gifted by God to, to work with the, the, the church youth group of 10, 15 kids. Some of them are designed to work for uh, out there on the road with a band that's going to touch maybe uh, the state of Tennessee. Some are designed by God and, and gifted by God to touch the world. Every one of those is important. Every one of those has to have that same passion, that drive, that commitment, that honoring God attitude, uh, whether you're touching 10 million or whether you're touching 10 or one. And so it has to start right here with our attitude. Right. And I, I agree with you totally. And folks, I want you to understand right now that if you have a story to tell, go tell it. You know, you can, you, you can go to our website, inyourcorner.tv, and we have some free resources there to help you get started self-publishing. But Ken, I want to come back to you where you have, you know, you have written books uh, you, uh, for Joel Osteen. You've written books mm -hmm. for George Foreman. Uh, I mean, Chuck Norris. I mean, these, these are iconic people in our culture. And those books obviously have sold millions of copies. So, you know, how does someone, you know, contact someone like you if they you know have if they have a huge name and and they want a Ken Abraham to write their story. <laughs> well, there are all kinds of Ken Abrahams out there. That's for sure. So, some great writers we have in our Christian Christian ranks nowadays. But uh, yeah, my my website is kenabrahambooks.com. Kenabrahambooks.com. You can find me there. Uh, the, the story with Joel is a classic story, though, for me. I love what Joel Osteen does. Some people criticize Joel because he he emphasizes the positive all the time. I think that's wonderful. I think the world is looking for hope, yeah. and, and that's what impressed me whenever I first saw Joel on TV. He had just taken over the church in Lakewood, uh, at Lakewood from his, his father. His father had pastored the church for 30 or 40 years. Think of this, Carrie. The first time Joel preached, he was preaching to 8,000 people there at Lakewood Church. The first time yeah. he ever preached, he's preaching to 8,000 people there and to a TV audience of, of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions at that point. I can't remember. but. He preached and, and there was something there that God had put his finger on, that God had put his hand on, his blessing, his anointing. And uh, one night I came home from church uh, here in Nashville and, and Joel was on TV and I, I said to my wife, I said, boy, you know, 
if there's ever an opportunity to work with that fellow, I would like to do it. I, I like what he's doing. I like what right. he's saying. And it just happened that the next week I, I talked to the publisher that, that Joel was signed up to do a book with, and it was his first book. And I asked the publisher, hey, how's that Joel Osteen book coming? He said, oh, Ken, it's, it's not working out so well. We put a writer with Joel and it's just not working. He and Joel are not working together. He said, would you be interested? I said, I would really be interested. I went over to talk to Joel about writing the book together, just as a possibility, and we started talking about the ideas. And I heard him talking about the favor of God. I heard him talking about how his mom had been healed. I said, Joel, these are signature stories for you. These are stories that you're going to tell for the rest of your life. And so we sat down and we started putting some things together. And the book that came out of that was a little book called Your Best Life now. And I bought that book and I absolutely love that book. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah. It, and God used that book to encourage a lot of people. And folks, I want to tell you, it's been an incredible joy to have Ken Abraham on the program with us today. Ken, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful, these wonderful insights that you've shared. And, and we just thank you so much for being on In Your Corner. Thank you, Carrie. One of, one of the things I can encourage our, our viewers, if God can use me, he can use you. <laughs> that's my, that's my <laughs> life. <laughs>